Xbox Game Pass could potentially have 30 million subscribers by the time Halo Infinite releases. How is that many people subscribing to a service possible and what does it mean for Halo Infinite? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So as I do my research online, looking up interesting Halo things for me to talk about for you guys, I came across this one article from Forbes talking about the amount of subscribers that Microsoft could potentially have for the Xbox Game Pass service by the time Halo Infinite releases, setting that game up to be even bigger than we could even honestly imagine. And the writer goes into some pretty logical lines of thought and potentially why this could be massive for Halo Infinite. So you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the details here. Paul Tassi, a writer for Forbes, says 30 million Xbox Game Pass subscriptions by Halo Infinite seems guaranteed. What he means by seems guaranteed is essentially that the current course of the additional subscriptions that Xbox Game Pass is receiving, that right now it's really on an upward slope to where hitting 30 million Xbox Game Pass subscriptions is very likely, which is just crazy to think about that many people all jumping in on this service. But honestly, like Xbox Game Pass is a killer service. I mean, it's definitely the, one of the best bargains in gaming, honestly. I'm personally subscribed to it and all I really play is Halo. But if it wasn't for Game Pass, then I probably wouldn't have played Halo Wars 1 or Halo Wars 2 like I did on my stream. By the way, link in the description down below if you want to check us out. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. This article goes into some statistics that they've seen with Xbox Game Pass subscriptions, which I actually really didn't know how many people were subscribed to it. So I thought that was kind of an interesting video to talk about, showcasing it right here. In April of 2020, one year ago, there were 10 million people subscribed. And then September 2020, 15 million. January 2021, 18 million. And then reportedly for April of 2021, it's jumped up to 23 million subscribers. And by that logic, you would think by the time of the rest of the year that 30 million could be very likely for Xbox subscriptions for the release of Halo Infinite, as most likely that game's going to release on November, probably November 15th to commemorate the 20th anniversary. I've made multiple videos on this channel talking about how some actors have even mentioned about the release coming out in November of this year and how it, 343 is heavily hinted in November release timeframe. So, I would be shocked if it doesn't release in that month. But what's causing this huge boom of success for Xbox Game Pass? Well, honestly, like I mentioned earlier, it's just like the deal itself is just really good. And if you're kind of a person who wants to jump in and play multiple types of games, well, Game Pass is a pretty great thing to do, especially since Xbox has recently acquired Bethesda and all those amazing titles that come with it, like Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, the eventual release of Starfield, whenever that happens, uh, The Evil Within, which I think I believe has sequel and Prey as well as a showcase right here. Some awesome games from just that company alone. But there's also other really awesome games like Destiny 2 is now on there. You have Outriders, one of the newest games that came out. And you also have the new edition of MLB The Show, which is pretty much the premier baseball game on gaming right now, is now on Game Pass as well. Another reason why Xbox Game Pass has seen such a huge boost is honestly because of the pandemic. People are staying home, they're playing more video games with their free time because obviously going out in the public isn't exactly much of an option right now at the moment. But obviously with the fall time, we might see that kind of dwindle down a little bit. But then the fall coming around, a lot more awesome games are coming out. And so, so we should be seeing a really good solid available player base for Halo Infinite's release. And when you have Halo Infinite releasing this fall, and of course there's gonna be more people probably subscribing to Game Pass because of the fall time season, people wanna jump in and play those new games. Microsoft is setting up Halo Infinite to be an absolutely massive launch, probably the biggest launch we've ever seen for a Halo game, because not only is it gonna be on Game Pass, but it's also gonna be on Steam. It's gonna be on their consoles as well for the not last gen of Xbox One series of consoles, as well as the Xbox Series X and S consoles and on pretty much any PC platform you'd want for Steam and for Game Pass on Windows Store. This is going to be the most accessible 
launch of a Halo game we've ever seen within the franchise. So we actually might get kind of shocked about the kind of numbers we might be hearing about when it comes to Halo Infinite. Now, obviously we kind of judge success from like initial launches of sales, right? But Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free to play and it's not required to own Xbox Live Gold to be able to play Halo Infinite's free multiplayer, which is an absolutely massive play again to get more people to jump in and play some Halo. And with such a large name like Halo, everybody knows Halo. When a new game comes out, people are going to be pretty interested and going to want to give it a go. And if it's plus if it's free to play for your multiplayer side of things, People are gonna give it a solid chance. You know, maybe they probably played Halo a few years ago, haven't touched it in a while. Well, Halo Infinite looking to be the game you might want to jump back into, as it is going to be a soft reboot, kind of also calling back from the classic games, some of the excellent elements from there, as well as kind of going back to the roots and kind of not going so far into the new gameplay mechanics that we saw like in Halo 5 and Halo 4. And 343 has stated that Halo Infinite is going to be an excellent starting point for people to jump into the franchise. It's not going to be so reliant on external lore and knowing what happened in previous games like we've had previously with Halo games, especially with Halo 5. That was a big issue with the campaign and the storytelling of that game. Where Halo Infinite is supposed to be a bit of a fresh start game as a service on a platform you're going to be playing Halo Infinite for the next 10 years if you're going to be playing Halo that long, which I feel is the excellent choice to make for a game like Halo. We've kind of essentially had 20 years of development when it comes to making Halo games. There's plenty of awesome things to pull out of the bag of tricks to make a really good Halo game. And so I think moving forward, just having a solid platform like this is your Halo game. It's going to be like this for the next 10 years. We can tweak it however you like, which the new Slip Space engine will certainly do that as well. Or will allow 343 to be agile enough to update the game as soon as possible, bringing in new content as well, like new cosmetics, new maps, new game modes, probably creating new game modes as well that we've never seen before in a Halo game. But all 343 needs to do is just make sure that gameplay and storytelling of Halo Infinite is what the players want. That's the most difficult part about this whole thing. You can set up the game to be all the things it needs to be, like free to play multiplayer, no Xbox Live Gold required, you know, having the tools and the engine to make content as quickly as possible, making the game as accessible as possible that you've ever seen in a franchise. But if the game's not good, people are still not going to play it. So that's why a lot of people still have a lot of concern and worry about this game. But I'm sure once E3 rolls around, which we do know it is happening this year in June, we will probably, I mean probably as in 99% very likely, we'll see some new gameplay mechanics, probably even some multiplayer showcasing within E3 this year. And you guarantee I'll cover it on this channel as soon as we get any information about Halo Infinite. So if you've been out of the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.